Hi, my name is Roxana Elliott from Geopol, and I've been an APOR member for five years. Geopol is a full-service market research firm that works primarily in emerging markets such as Africa, Asia, and Latin America, and we conduct research through remote, mobile-based methods. That includes SMS, voice call, mobile web, and mobile application. We have been conducting studies on the impact of coronavirus in Sub-Saharan Africa since March, and today I'm going to be going through some highlights from our most recent studies on how coronavirus is impacting those in Sub-Saharan Africa. So the study I'll be going through today was run in two waves, one in early April and one in late April to early May of this year. And it was run in 12 countries throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. You can see we have a good mix of countries in East Africa, West Africa, Central and Southern Africa. The study was run through SMS in which a two-way conversation is initiated with the respondent and mobile web, which is a basic web link that can be opened up in a mobile browser. We had a sample size of 400 per country per wave and over 5,000 unique respondents who've participated in both waves of the study. One of the first things we looked at was the level of concern over coronavirus in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we found that it was very high. 71% of respondents indicated that they are very concerned over coronavirus. And this was the case even in our first round of data collection, which was really just as the outbreak was starting in the region. We also looked into the most concerning aspect of the coronavirus pandemic. And here we found that while contracting the disease is the top concern for people, the economic impact is also a really big concern for those in Sub-Saharan Africa. We know that a lot of countries in Sub-Saharan Africa already have fairly fragile economies and re rely a lot on informal trade, which will be impacted by the lockdowns and other restrictions that are in place due to coronavirus. We also looked at what preventative measures are being taken, finding that almost all respondents, 96%, indicated that they have taken measures to protect themselves from coronavirus. And when we looked into this more in depth, we found that increasing hygiene, so increasing hand washing and other hygienic activities was the top item here, but some people are also working from home or avoiding public places. And then we looked specifically at self-quarantining as well, and we found again a quite high percent, 71% overall, said that they are already self-quarantining, although this answer varied a lot by country. So you can see that South Africa and Rwanda, which had early lockdown efforts, had higher levels of self-quarantining, whereas countries such as Tanzania and Benin, which have not had such strict lockdowns, had lower reported levels of self-quarantining. One of the main concerns over coronavirus and related restrictions is Sub-Saharan Africa is how it will impact food security. Several of the countries included in this study already have high levels of food insecurity, and it's expected that the disruptions to the food supply chain and other items will make food security worse over time. And we found this to be true already with our respondents. We found that 80% indicated that within the seven days prior to the survey, they were worried that they wouldn't have enough food to eat due to lack of money or other resources. We also observed changes in shopping behavior for both food and non-essential goods. So almost 60% said that they are shopping for food less often. And in terms of purchase of non-essential or consumer goods, we found a large majority, almost 70%, say that they are purchasing less non-essential goods. We also looked at how respondents think their governments are doing in terms of the actions they've taken to stop the spread of coronavirus. And here we also found quite mixed results dependent on country and what actions had already been taken. But overall, 55% said that their governments have done enough to stop the spread of coronavirus. So still almost half, 45%, did not think their governments had done enough to stop the spread. We also looked at the sources of information on coronavirus. As we know that there's been a lot of misinformation spread specifically on social media and channels such as WhatsApp in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we did find that social media is one of the biggest sources of information on coronavirus, with 39% saying that that's their main source of information, compared to 44% who said that TV was their main source. Those are some of the highlights from our report. You can also find a full interactive dashboard and report available at geopol.com. And you can email me to get the raw data at roxana at geopol.com. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.